Be able to get the season to start. Your top story in season three that you're looking most forward to. Well, I mean, I, I'd be crazy if I didn't talk about Chalk. You know, the first legend in the park. Certainly, I've watched his journey. This is just another step to it, right? Uh, someone that was maybe skeptical about the NBA 2K League in season one. Now it's become really engulfed his whole life to maybe make Nets GC a championship winner. You no, know, a lot of people are going to get a rude awakening when, you know, I come in and, you know, I do my thing. So uh, all these players are playing from their markets. You know what I mean? So he's in Brooklyn. He's not at home. He's with his teammates in Brooklyn. What has happened in this world to make these teams come closer and closer together? I think those are the stories you're going to see. I mean, Blazer 5's got two MVPs uh, coming back. We've only had two seasons. They have both MVPs, but they have no championships. So those are some storylines that can't. This is the WNBA on 2K Sports. Tonight we'll see the Chicago Sky as they play against the Dallas Wings. And from the Lone Star State, I'm Blake Zuniga with Ryan Banapatemi and Tim Swartz. Welcome to some 2K Hoops. And it's going to be the Wings off the tip. And when it comes to veteran players on a team, what characteristics makes for a good leader for the younger players? So the ability to turn mistakes into teaching moments is so huge. You have to understand that the younger players are going to make mistakes, so patience is key. And I would also add that you want to lead by example because younger players are very impressionable. So it's important to set a good example every day, not just on the court, but off the court as well. Harrison uses the glass to finish the layup. Strong rebounding, and she gets the easy putback as a result. Vandersloot with it. Johnson pulls it in. Still can't get anything going here after three tries. Here's Diggin Smith. The high floater. Mechanically sound, even on unconventional shots. And Diggin Smith does a pretty good job of playing to her strengths. Dolson's shot's good. An example of some fine interior passing before that basket. On the wing, Kayla Thornton. Asto Gumbawale. Clock at four. Had a nice open look right there. With confidence and a smooth jumper, Ogumbawale has no problem converting from the perimeter. Now here's Vandersloot. And here's Quigley. Johnson defending. Outside, Quigley. Back to Vandersloot. From the arc. Johnson pulls it in. And now they're one for five to start this game. Having trouble getting it going. Outside, Agumawale. Out to the right wing. Now here's Harrison. Guarded by Dolson. Horton outside. Fires for three. Offensive board. Shots good by Johnson. Postseason, she's top ten in the league in O boards. Johnson has a great way of reading the missed shots of teammates. Well, guys, we know players develop at their own pace, but some are faster than others, like Lori Johnson. Advanced for her age, she blossomed uh, earlier than many. And that's what led her to becoming an all-star in just her second season. And there it is. An absolute floor general. Vision and passing are the trademarks of Diggin Smith's game. Now here's Vandersloot. 
Pass to DeShields. Dolson defended by Harrison. And count it. The shot is good, and she'll go to the line. Well, one part of Johnson's game that's always stood out to me is her rebounding. Yeah, she brings an old-school tenacity to the boards, and I love her willingness to battle with just about anyone on the hardwood. And really, it's tough to outwork Johnson when she's locked in. Think of the best point guards in the league. Vandersloot has got to be right up there. And if you don't believe me, guys, just look at her assist numbers over the years. Now here's a Goomba Wale. Takes the three. A rebound by the sky. Just under three and a half minutes elapsed here in the first quarter. Outside Quigley. On the wing, Diamond to Shields. Shot high post. It doesn't go for her. That's too good a look to pass up there, despite the result. Thornton, Vandersloot defending. Outside, Diggin Smith. Shoots over to Shields. And again, it's Dallas converting. And thinking of Vandersloot's success as a floor general, I think it stems from her top-tier awareness. Yeah, she's always had a tremendous feel for the game. Reads defenses beautifully and makes plays accordingly. With great chemistry, Courtney and her teammates sink well on the court. Time called here. The Sky decide to talk it over. Yeah, I think the coach could be trying to just get a break in action to clear their heads. They've gone ice cold, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to give them a quick breather. Yeah, they needed the timeout here. Anything to try to get them to forget all the missed shots we've been seeing. Maybe refocus a bit. Defense Dallas. Here's Faulkner. There's the steal. To the inside. Gray. Oh, the stupendous finish in traffic. Hey, look, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They keep getting in the paint and they keep scoring points. And you know, Brian, there's not really a lot you can do as a defense when they keep getting in the paint like they have been on this run. And what can you say about the playmaking of Courtney Vandersloot? Fantastic vision, fantastic passing ability, consistently near the top of the assist board in the WNBA. Easily one of the best passers this league has ever seen. Six on the shot clock. What's up a three? Here's McGee Stafford. A chance to extend the lead to double digits, but it's no good. Outside Faulkner, Williams, and stolen by Gray. Pass to McCarty Williams. Here's Davis, Faulkner defending. Here's McGee Stafford. Five to shoot. Here's Anigwe. Basket is good. The assist from Alicia Gray. Defensively, they have got to pick up the intensity. Hard to win surrendering this high a field goal percentage. Yeah, still early, but you're right. They need to bump up the intensity on defense. Three seconds separating the shot clock and the game clock. Pass to Copper. Outside Williams. Misses off the right iron. That's a missed opportunity right there. And she'll be the first to tell you that's one she should have buried. So as we end...
2KMC, present and accounted for. Here's the 2K Compete event schedule for the upcoming weeks. We are getting it started on Saturday with some Court Conqueror, doubles edition. Pair up and battle the best duos in NBA history. On Sunday, it's Red Ball, Blue Ball Extreme. Find your team's color and score the bucket or hit the opposing team. They both get you points. Tuesday, hit the rec to earn double rep all day long. And it's dime time on Thursday. One community, one goal, and everyone who contributes gets that VC. Don't miss out on these chances to compete and earn. The Nuggets are not holding anything back in the wardrobe department as they made their entrance tonight, hoping to make an impression on their home floor. And the game arrival, sponsored by Express. Dress like a pro. A beautiful skyline of Denver, Colorado is our backdrop tonight. Good Friday night to you sports fans. You've come to the right place. It's the NBA on 2K Sports. In this game, we'll see the Denver Nuggets against the New York Knicks. This, as we approach the playoffs, let's now take a look at what is shaping up in the West. GA, it's up. Nuggets coach Mike Malone is the son of longtime NBA assistant coach Brendan Malone, who was on the staff with the... That's some pretty sound advice. Thanks, DA. Far toward the end of the season, some players hit a wall. Others come alive. They can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but that energizes them. What can a guy do to keep improving till the season's end? Well, I think it starts first with mindset, Kevin. Staying ready, which means you have to be diligent about staying in shape, getting your extra work in if you're not getting the reps in games. Stay even-keeled emotionally. You can't get too high or too low. Keep that professional perspective. I'm a pro. I'm doing what I've always dreamed of doing. I'm getting paid well to do it, and I'm going to focus on getting better each day. Excellent perspective. So the New York starting five. Taj Gibson is out there with Julius Randle. Then there's Mo Harkless. Then there's Peyton. And it's Barrett at the two go. And for the Nuggets, Bill Zapp and Jokic, the big men. Filling out the wings, Harris and Barton. And it's Murray in at the one. Pass to Barton. Six to shoot. And the layup ball. Barton doesn't back up now. He really takes on challenges. Even when you rough up Barton, he's going to fight through contact and make it hard for you. Peyton against Murray. It's hauled in by the Nuggets. They come into this one following the loss to the Mavericks. to Millsap. Over Peyton. Good for the basket. Starting off one for one with that shot. It's good to see Millsap rise up from mid-range because he's uh, pretty proficient from there. Millsap against Randall. Pass to Gibson. Now the pass to Barrett. New York needs to get off a shot. No good from Peyton. Nuggets have gone two or three here to start off the game. And Harris wide open. He shoots. Hits it from three-point range. Gary Harris has really good rhythm. When he's in a groove now, he feels comfortable going with the pull-up jump. It's catch. Here's Gibson. He saw him with 10 points last game. Here's Randall. They get it again. It's good on the putback. You got to get a body on Gibson because if you don't, he's relentless in attacking the offensive glass. Murray, the pass to Jokic. And just under two and a half minutes elapsed here in the first. Plays it up off the glass. Boy, they're on fire right now, cooking with gas, starting this one out 4-5. Well, Greg, the rapid ascension of Nikola Jokic into NBA stardom has been nothing short of amazing. You know, he really is an elite center now. 
I mean, he's the best player on a very talented young team in the West. I would not be surprised to see him win an MVP in the next few years. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. And Clark, one thing that makes Will Barton so good is that he fits right in among any group of players. And I like the pace he plays with, guys. He doesn't seem to force the issue. He lets the game come to him, and when he has opportunities to explode, he usually does. He's always moving. He's active at both ends. Um, he's a high-quality performer. That free throw good from Barton. And a trying summer for the New York Knicks fans. After trading away Przingis, they were hoping to get a big-name player in free agency, Greg, and they didn't. You know, shocking. They refused to offer the max to Kevin Durant. I mean, there were concerns with the Achilles, but instead he ends up in Brooklyn. Combine that with fans' disappointment at missing out on Zion Williamson. And the saga continues. Yeah, I've got mad respect for the way Barton carries himself. I mean, he's a terrific teammate. He does everything he can to impact winning. Trying to get open is Randall. It's hauled in by Harris. You know, you don't always get that opportunity, so those are the ones you hate to miss. Here's Murray. He'll zap left side. Randall with some nice D. And you can see the defenders afraid to kind of get in his way a lot of times when he's on his way to the basket. But on that one, they were there. Oh, I love the way Peyton is always looking to swing the ball. I mean, he's constantly on the lookout for the ball reversal to help an open teammate get a shot. Here's Murray. Got it. Good job in the low post. They've wasted no time settling into their offense. Yeah, they're lasered in. I mean, really making the most of their possession. Peyton surveying the floor. Boats one up. He doesn't hit that one. Murray with the defensive effort. And here's Denver. They're on a 13-4 run right now. Jokic trying to free himself up. Harris' his shot is good. Harris has got five points so far. Gary Harris says, I got more than just a three-point shot, folks. Excellent at getting into the lane by penetration. And Barrett now top of the key. Outside Robinson. Out to the wing. Here's Peyton. Rejected by Harris. But he recovers it. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. Porter's checked in for the Nuggets. Torrey Craig comes in for Gary Harris. Then for the Knicks, Bobby Portis comes in for Julius Randle. And it's Neil Aquina in for Peyton. New York comes into this following a loss to the Hawks in Atlanta. Here's Murray. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. And I have just been so impressed with the way Jamal Murray has added to his game. Keeps pushing himself every offseason to make the most of his abilities as a player and continues to be a consistent threat from the outside. Free throw good, Murray. And with Murray, Greg, you forget how young he is. He entered the NBA right out of his freshman year at Kentucky. I mean, Murray was taken seventh in his draft and has kind of flown under the radar from that class. But the more you watch him, the more you feel like you're seeing a star in the making. Catching up on the changes for Denver. Plumlee is checked in for Jokic. And it's Jeremy Grant in for Paul Millsap. And, and what an advantage. You really feel like you can always trust him when he's at the line. Portis, a good finish at the rack off the slick feet. You know, that's what you love about Neely Kena. I mean, very unselfish and constantly looking to set up his guy. Murray kicks to Grant. And Grant slams it home. Watch out below. Grant just showing no regard for the bucket there. Looking like he was trying to tear that thing off. Here's Neil Aquino. He's covered by Murray. Here's Knox. 11 feet out and he hits it. 32 seconds left in the first. 
Here's Craig. He's guarded by Bullock. Murray surveying the D. That one falls, his second basket of the game. He's now two for three. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. And when you make five in a row in close like that, it also takes pressure off your perimeter guys, too. Portis kicks to Bullock. One second left. And as the first quarter wraps up, already a double-digit lead. Denver on top, up 11. We'll get things started in the second quarter when we return. <laughs> Nicole Jokic, your former second round pick, turned star at Boston, like fashion. In We're back, winning tips. Now it's time to go over the most common play, and it's the most common play in our game, and that's the high pick and roll. There are five ways and five different settings that you can use in NBA 2K20 to defend the pick and roll. First, let's get started with the hard hedge. The hard hedge is an aggressive pick and roll defense. It's designed to make the ball handler go back where he came from. He will stay there for approximately two to three dribbles before returning back to his assignment. The next one is a soft hedge. Very similar to the hard hedge, only that he's only gonna stay for a dribble before returning back to his assignment. Now it's time to talk about the catch edge. The catch edge is the most common pick and roll coverage played by centers in the NBA. The responsibility of the catch edge defender Tips off a broadcast so I get in the lowdown for the oh, guys for all of the star power. Yeah, and he has their confidence. David, thank you. And a moment now to look at the year-to-year -year scoring output and how it has been trending for Millsap. And maybe it's shocking. Maybe, no, well, maybe not too shocking, but the scoring trend over the last few years has been going down a bit. I'm sure it's something he's well aware of. And we'll see if that continues to be the case. Now the starting group for the Denver Nuggets. Filling out the wings, Harris and Barton. Millsap and Jokic, the big men. And it's Murray in at the point guard. And for Detroit, at the forward positions, Snell and Griffin. Derrick Rose is out there with Kennard. And it's Wood in at the five. Here's Kennard. Lock at six. Close. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. And tonight, two teams, Brent, that like to get into their sets, work the ball, have a little patience. Back in your day, what was your favorite play to run in half court? Any NBA player, Kevin, will tell you their favorite play to run in the half court was any play that was called for, for them. them. <laughs> yeah. So let's start with that. Uh, but m most of the time, I just enjoyed sets where the ball moved around. Four or five touches. We talk often about good to great, but when you knew the opportunity for you to shoot the ball was there, but there was a better one for the next guy, that's when you're operating at a high level. And for Derrick Rose, the question will be how much of his MVP level of play from 2011 can he recover? You'd love to see him return to that form. And Rose drops them both. And at the line, it's all about consistency with him. His routine, his stroke, it never wavers. Murray kicks to Harris. Passes it to Jokic. Here's Barton. 
And here's Harris from the arc. Jokic passes to Murray. That's no good. Misses his first shot of the night. And it's Rose with the ball for the Detroit Pistons. Down low. And finished off by Griffin. Wow, what a moment right there. Griffin putting on a show. He is just an awesome dunker. Harris outside. Pass to Millsap. Goes back up. He takes it up and lays it in. Yeah, Millsap a little bit gritty there. Good to see him go in and hit the glass. First quarter of play with about a minute and a half gone. Here's Wood. He's coming off a 22-point game against the 76ers in Philadelphia. Yeah, but there's always this point, Kevin. you got to look at where did he also impact the game. It was on the rebounding end of the floor. A tremendous performance there. Now that's a high percentage look when the D doesn't fight over the screen. And the coach over there just asking for one simple thing, and that's some effort. Got burned on that one. Now here's Millsap. 20 points for him last game against the Mavericks in Dallas. And he also controlled the backboard as well. I mean, he really did a terrific job. you got to be aware of Murray there. You just know he's aiming to get payback with a triple. Talk about players who are X-Factors for their team and for the Nuggets. Jamal Murray is one of those guys. He is a guy that once he gets going, feels like the team can become unbeatable. Here's Snell. A look at his stats. He averages a bit over eight points a game. Rose, no good. And so it's Murray who brings the ball up for the Nugget. Trailing by two. He feeds it to Millsap. Good, and the assist goes to Murray. Millsap's got his second bucket of the night. As you said, Brent, a hot Jamal Murray can take over a game. Big-time investment from the Nuggets this offseason and what Jamal Murray is to them now, but what he can be in the future. And I think right now what he's looking to be is as consistent as he possibly can be, night in and night out, to prepare this team each season to play its best basketball in the postseason. They grab their own miss, and that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. It's going to be on Jokic. The Pistons shooting their third and fourth free throw shots of the night. And he knocks down the first one. And the Pistons making a change here. Makai Lucas checked in. Denver also making some changes. Porter's checked in for Barton. And it's Torrey Craig in for Harris. And so he hits both. Here's Craig, right now averaging about five points a game. And first quarter, we're about three and a half minutes in. No good that time. Griffin with some nice D. Well, Coach Mike Malone has grown up with this young Nuggets team. He says that he believes in the youth of this team. Well, the future is so bright for the Denver Nuggets, and really where you have to give Mike Malone a ton of credit is when they made the decision between their two bigs, Jokic and Nurkic, sticking with Jokic, and then changing their entire offensive style to play from a point center position. It has paid huge dividends.
Coverage is designed to do. Probably the most common pick and roll coverage across the league is switching. This one is straightforward. You are switching assignments with the screener and you wanna be able to handle this at the primary level. Now when the ball is on the wings, the most common pick and roll defense you'll see is called ice. The ice defense is to isolate the ball on one side of the floor. The on ball defender will jump to the middle of the floor, get on the hip of the ball handler and push it to the baseline side and he's pushing it to the big who is dropping off, playing very similar to catch hedge principles. All right, so now we gotta go over off ball screens. And in NBA 2K20, there are three different ways to play these off ball screens. First, let's go over over. Hello and welcome. It's the WNBA here on 2K Sports. And on tap tonight, it's the Indiana Fever going up against the Los Angeles Sparks. Courtside with Tim Swartz and Brian Benefitemi, I'm Blake Suniga, and we've got a fun one. Well, looking at the players who make their teammates better, who tops the list for you guys? It has to be Stu Bird, the best point guard in WNBA history, a calming veteran presence on and off the court. She just seems so Three. much in the league. So her teammates trust what she says and what she does. Hold up, Tim. What about Brianna Stewart? Uh, I mean, she entered the league with a bang and earned the trust of those around her right away. And she just plays with so much passion that it rubs off on her teammates. Kelsey Mitchell into the lane. Some solid defense from Candace Parker. 11 feet out. Good work there as it goes. Sometimes you kind of feel bad for defenders of Parker. It's almost like she doesn't even notice them sometimes. The contact with zero effect on that hoop. Now here's Wheeler. To the middle. It's stolen by Parker. Inside. And she takes it in for the layup off a very nice feed. The experience of Parker, it makes her tough near the hoop. She just figures out ways to score. Right side, Wheeler. Poked loose. It's stolen by Neko Gumake. Here's Ruffin Pratt. Good for the basket, starting off one for one with that shot. Quality court vision to find the open teammate. Arthur's guard-like skills look just on full display. To the paint, Shanwa. Can't hit from in close. And a three-on-three -three fast break. Great pass to set up the land. The ball movement on this run has been fantastic, and it's a big part of why they've been able to get good looks. Absolutely, the defense unable to react quickly enough to, to deal with their passing. Now here's Mitchell. Looking to end the run. And it's Parker with the block. He's top 10 all time in block. Parker has length and leaping ability. Do not check it. And this run really triggered by their transition offense. Let's see if they keep that trend up. They've gotten a burst of energy, and their offense is starting to click. Timeout called the fever. Well, you know, Candace Parker had won almost everything in basketball before the age of 30. College titles, gold medals, she's won MVP. The only thing missing in the trophy case was a WNBA championship. Outside Wheeler. And just under two and a half minutes elapsed here in the first. Good work defensively by Candace Parker. And guys, Parker and the Sparks made the 2016 WNBA Finals. Turned out to be an epic series. Oh, it was epic indeed. And it came down to a winner-take-all game five on the road. And it only set the stage for Parker to have one of her best games ever. A game-high 28 points and 12 rebounds as the Sparks won 77-76. And you know what? Parker was also named Finals MVP. A slow start. Five straight misses out of the gate. Here's Ruffin Pratt. That shot off. And so the Fever will take it the other way. To the inside. 
Fader on the way. One up, one down. Two points with our first shot in this game. A tough, knowledgeable player with good intangibles to bring... Let's not forget, when you talk about the high screen and roll game, the purpose of this is to try to get either the ball handler or the screener open. But depending on these defenses, you're going to give up something. Using these defensive pick and roll schemes, you can limit their options. Hey, we're not trying to tell you which button here to press shoot. We're trying to translate your game into victories. Now that you've watched these two parts, you're already a better player. Now I encourage you to go finish your My Career Story because next week we're going into the neighborhood. And you know the rules, winners win, and I'm out. Good Friday night to you sports fans. You've come to the right place. It's the NBA on 2K Sports with Hall of Famer Doris Burke and Greg Anthony. This is Kevin Harlan. On the sidelines, we have David Aldridge reporting. We'll see the Golden State Warriors facing the West All-Stars. Now Golden State's starting five. Curry and Clay, the Splash Brothers, in the backcourt. Green is out there with Wiggins, and it's Chris in at the center, locking down the middle. Now LeBron, after the missed three from Stephen Curry. Harden, no good. It's stolen by Davis. Harden, the pass to Leonard. They get a bet. Here's Davis. And too long on the shot. Boy, that's 0 for 3 in the early going. Just a little out of sync. From deep green, the West All-Stars pull it in. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. Well, I had a chance to catch up with Coach Mike D'Antoni. His primary concern defensively, stopping Steph Curry. Coach said he changes the geometry of the court with his shooting. And, Kevin, this is no time for advanced math, but they have no choice. Thanks, David. James with the bucket. And, boy, did they need that one. Their first make in the five field goal attempts they've had. Curry looking it over. Thompson for three. And, again, no good by Golden State. Here's West now. Outside Leonard. Over Green. And that one's good, Leonard. Well, we know this about Kawhi Leonard. He can score at all three levels, taking advantage of the mid-range game there. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Curry with a wide-open look. That's in, and he found his range with that one. Now one for two. Nothing better than a hustle play like that. It gets the whole team amped up, sets the example for everyone. Harden against Thompson. It's good. And I love seeing Harden get room to shoot from that mid-range position, an effective score in that area. Wiggins passes to Chris. Back to Wiggins. Anthony Davis grabs the miss. And you know, you can't impact a shot that close any better than he did on that possession. Boy, whether he blocks it or simply alters it, the result is pretty much the same. And I like to see this. They're calling his number early, and he's delivering. They know that if this guy goes off, their chances of winning rise exponentially. Now here's Curry. With the floater. Yep, that one goes in there. Curry's got his second bucket of the game to go. 
Well, don't underestimate Curry because of his size. This guy does a great job absorbing contact and still finishing. To the inside, James and the dunk by James. Sometimes a player is born with a passer's mindset. He deals it with conviction. So an almost entirely new group now for the West. Jokic, he's checked in for Davis. Tatum comes in for Kawhi Leonard. Devin Booker, he's checked in for James Harden. And Chris Paul's subbed in for Doncic. Free throw good, LeBron. Well, how about a multi-time champion and a multi-time MVP? And LeBron James continues to dominate. It truly is special to watch. Defended by Booker. Higgins outside. Just five on the clock. Plays it up and banks it in. Well, you think the body up to Wiggins...